Here I've got a really classic problem. I've seen it appear a lot of different places, but I know for sure that it's in a math contest from Costa Rica from 2009. So we, what we want to do is show that for all natural numbers n, the ceiling of the square root of 3 plus 1 to the 2n is a multiple of 2 to the n plus 1. So let's just recall that the ceiling function takes a real number and goes to the next integer. So if you're already at an integer, you stay at that integer. So the ceiling of 5 would be 5 but the ceiling of 5.7 would be 6. You go upstairs. It's like an elevator up. So I've got a bunch of videos about the floor function. That's like an elevator down. This is like a companion to that. Okay, so in order to do this, we'll take the ceiling of this object and actually find a closed form for it and then use a trick involving recursive sequences in order to finish it off. Okay, so let's maybe first note that we have the following. Uh, square root of three minus one is definitely less than one. Well, that's clear because we've got the square root of three is between one and two, but that means that for all n, the square root of three minus one to the n is also less than one. Okay. And that gives us some motivation to look at the following combination of this guy with kind of its cousin. So the fact that root 3 minus 1 to the n is less than 1, coupled with the fact that we're looking for the ceiling of this object, really gives us some motivation that maybe we should look at the sum of something like this and something like this. And that's exactly what we'll do. So we'll look at the square root of 3 plus 1 to the 2n plus the square root of 3 minus 1 to the 2n. And I'd like to point out real quick that our goal here is that this will be an integer. And since this is an integer, well, we've got a lot of work to get there, and this thing that we're adding on is less than one, that means that the ceiling of our goal object is just this sum right here. Okay, well, let's get to showing that this is an integer. So we'll expand each of these using a binomial formula. So that's gonna give us the sum as k goes from zero up to 2n of 2n choose k times the square root of three to the k, and then that'll be plus the sum as k goes from zero to two n of two n choose k minus one to the two n minus k, the square root of three to the k. But next we'll notice that two n is obviously even, so minus one to the two n minus k is the same thing as minus one to the k. That really gives us a nice way to push these sums together. So now we've got this is the sum as k goes from 0 up to 2n of 2n choose k times square root of 3 to the k plus minus 1 to the k times another square root of 3 to the k. So that's just pushing those together. But it's pretty clear that this object right here is equal to 0 if k is odd. Well, that's because you get a minus sign here, and then you'll have root 3k minus root 3k. That cancels. And it's equal to 2 times 3 to the k over 2 if k is even. Well, in that case, you get minus one to an even number, which is just plus one, and then that doubles up. So that means this is going to change into the sum as k goes from zero to two n over just the even values of k of two n choose k times root three to the two k, or in other words, 3 to the k over 2, and I'll just go ahead and bring that 2 out front that's the, multiplying this here. Okay, but then binomial coefficients like this are always integers. Since k is even, this is always an integer, so that means our object here is also always an integer. Okay, but again, 
Since we're adding something which is less than one to our goal object, that means that this is equal to the ceiling of the square root of three plus one to the two n. So that was like kind of the first step of our solution. And now we'll maybe clean up the board, recall that on the next board, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, on the last board, we determined that the ceiling of root three plus one to the two n was in fact equal to root three plus one to the two n plus root three minus one to the two n. So that motivates us to study a little bit of a generalization of this sequence where we allow for any powers here instead of just even powers. And I switched this root three minus one to a one minus root three because otherwise the odd terms in here are not integers. But if we have it in this order, the odd terms will always be integers, which means it's a kind of more proper generalization of this right here. Notice when we've got even exponents, this guy is gonna be the same thing as that guy. Now that we've got our setup, let's calculate a couple of our first terms from this sequence to see how this might work. So let's notice that a1, for instance, is root 3 plus 1 plus 1 minus root 3. Well, those root 3s cancel and we've just got 2. So a2 is equal to, well, we can calculate that pretty easily. The square root of 3 plus 1 squared plus 1 minus the square root of 3 squared. So I'll let you guys multiply that out if you want to, but what you'll see is that this is equal to eight. Then let's calculate a couple more, a3, a4. So again, that's just like arithmetic, so I won't worry about doing it on screen, but here you get 20, and then you'll get 56. And then finally for a5, we'll get the number 152. So let's notice our goal is to show that the even terms are divisible by 2 to the n plus 1. Well, notice that this guy right here is most definitely divisible by 4. In this case, the n in the 2 to the n would be 1 here. So we're having 2 to the 1 plus 1. So let's maybe write that out, 2 to the 1 plus 1. And then this guy right here is divisible by eight, well that's clear because it's eight times seven and that is two to the two plus one. Where here our n is being played by two because we've got a sub four which is two times two. Now we just need to notice what's happening with these odd terms. Well, maybe it would be useful to extend this back to a zero Notice that a0 is also 2. And then we see that a0 and a1 are both multiples of 2. And now we've got a pattern happening. So notice that a2 and a3 are both multiples of 4, or they're divisible by 4. And then a4 and a5 are both multiples of 8, or they are divisible by 8. So what's the claim that we'll end up proving? So our claim will be that a sub 2n and a sub 2n plus 1 are multiples of 2 to the n plus 1. So notice for this pair, our n is equal to 0. So we'll have 2 to the 0 plus 1, which is just 2. We're good to go there. For this pair, our n is 1. For this pair, our n is 2. So everything seems to work here. And how will we prove this claim? Well, it's gonna be with the following fact regarding sequences of this form and recursive sequences. And that is, if we've got a sequence, maybe I'll call it T sub n, which is alpha to the n, beta to the n. And if we take the polynomial x minus alpha times x minus beta, and that multiplies out to x squared minus ax minus b, for appropriate values of a and b, then that means that we have tn is equal to a times tn minus one plus b times tn minus two. So I'll just present that as a fact, but let me know in the comments if you want me to prove something like this in an upcoming video.
Okay, so let's maybe summarize what we've got at the top and now we're ready to finish it off. Let's see what we've got so far. We built a sequence that looked a lot like our stuff over here. Root three plus one to the n plus one minus root three to the n. We noticed that our goal object, which was the ceiling of this two nth power of root three plus one, was equal to the two nth term of our sequence. Also, by the fact that we didn't prove, we know that this sequence satisfies the following recursion. So a sub n is equal to two times a sub n minus one minus two times a sub n minus two. And that's because if you take x minus root three plus one times x minus one minus root three, you get x squared plus two x minus two. Now, all we need to finish this off is to prove that 2n plus 1 divides evenly into a sub 2n. And as a bonus, we'll show that a, 2 to the n plus 1 divides evenly into a sub 2n plus 2. And so this proof will be done by induction. And I want to notice the little chart that we made before can serve as our base case. So I'll just put our base case is done by something that we've already done. We went down a, quite a bit further than we would have had to do for our base case. Now let's make an induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis is for some k bigger than or equal to one, we know two to the k plus one divides a sub two k and two to the k plus one divides a sub two k plus one. And now we'll want to look at the object a sub 2k plus 2. So we've got a sub 2k plus 2 applying our recursion. That's going to be 2 times a sub 2k plus 1 minus 2 times a sub 2k. But then these divisibility statements say that each of these are multiples of 2. So that means we can take this guy right here and this guy right here and write them as, say, 2 to the k plus 1 times u and then 2 to the k plus 1 times v. But now combining that with the 2 here and here, we'll see that we have 2 to the k plus 2 times u minus v which tells us that two to the k plus two divides a sub two k plus two. And then we can do something similar for a sub two k plus three to really finish this off. But I'll let you guys tackle the odd case. So we've proven this statement by induction, but by all of the observations we made, that's exactly what we needed to do to solve this problem. And that's a good place to stop.